Hey family members, it's Mr. Panza, just here to review for our first half of the fraction test. Here are the main questions that we've been going over. First, how do we add and subtract mixed numbers? How do we compare fractions? And how do we find fractions on a number line? Tonight's homework doesn't really give you any examples of this fractions on a number line. The students are still really getting a grasp of it. So I'm going to go over tonight's homework with you. I'm going to give some of the answers, and I'm also going to show equivalency, because that's important as well. Let me go back to the first page. Make sure you have your name at the top. The first thing you need to do is compare these fractions. Now, it's easy enough. They both have a common denominator, so obviously this one is greater than that one, which means B is our answer. However, I wanted all of you to be aware of the trick that I taught the students. It's a cross-multiplication trick to compare fractions. You take the denominator, on 1, and multiply it to the numerator of 1. 5 times 2 is 10. And you write it above this fraction. Then, you take the denominator on this one, multiply it by the numerator here. 5 times 3 is 15, which shows you that 15 is larger than 10, which means that 3 fifths is greater than 2 fifths. Just a quick trick to help you compare fractions, which is really helpful when you do not have a common denominator. Here we're simplifying after we subtract. We haven't really gone over too much into simplest form, really as long as the students are able to subtract the fractions, that works for me. They take the 6, they subtract 2, and they get 4 for the numerator, and they know to just push the denominator right on over into their answer, which gives them 4 eighths. Simplest forms will be taking this number and finding an equivalent fraction of 4 eighths. And to show you an example, I have a full fraction here, and I'm going to separate it into eighths, which would be these little blue pieces. So if I'm talking four eighths, I would take four of these little blue pieces, put it onto my fraction. And there is four eighths, and that shows me that four eighths is half of this piece. I'm looking for an equivalent fraction, though, or what would be equal, but not look exactly the same as this fraction right here. So I'm going to take a couple of others. For example, this pink one here. And if I take that pink one and I put it on top of the 4 eighths, I recognize that 1 half of it is covered. So even though 1 half is covered, and 1 half does not look like the fraction of 4 eighths, which we see here, it's still the same exact equivalency. 1 half equals 4 eighths, because when I put 1 half of a fraction, and I multiply it by a certain number, I can also see that 4 eighths is equal to 1 half. The way you do that mathematically, quite simply, is either multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same exact number, or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same exact number. So in this case, to simplify, I would take 4, and I would divide it by 2, and I would take 8, and I would divide it by 2. 2 goes into 4 twice, and 2 goes into 8 four times. You may be wondering, well, that's not really the simplest form, so just keep dividing. I'm going to divide it by 2 again, and divide it by 2, because whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator, and that gives me 1 half. However, as long as the students are able to recognize that when you subtract 6 eighths from 2 eighths, you get 4 eighths. That's good enough for now. 3 tenths plus 1 tenth. Once again, add the numerators, bring down the denominators and get 4 tenths. If you want to find the equivalent fraction to 4 tenths, divide the numerator by 2 and get 2. And whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator. Divide that by 2 and get 5. So in simplest form, 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths. That's my answer. Let's take a look at question number 4. Question 4 asks you which gives you the sum of 7 twelfths. Well, what I want the students to do is try each individual one. One twelfth plus one twelfth is two twelfths, plus three more is five twelfths. That clearly does not give me what I'm looking for. So by process of elimination, I'm going to cross out A. How about four twelfths? One, two, three more twelfths is seven twelfths. That could be the correct answer. So I'm just going to put a star here, but I'm still going to test out C and D. 2 twelfths, 2 twelfths, 2 twelfths, 2 twelfths, 2, 4, 6, 8 twelfths. Not the correct answer. And 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 twelfths is also the incorrect answer. 
So we were right when we came across B to see that 4 twelfths plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth is 7 twelfths because the denominators stay the same and the numerators just get added together. Flip it over to the back. Let's do the back questions. Here we are again looking for equivalent fractions. Well, I showed you earlier how to divide fractions to come up with equivalency. Now is the easier way to do it. Just multiply. So which, A, B, C, or D, shows an equivalent fraction of 6 tenths? Well, it's 60 over 100. Because if you multiply the numerator 6 by 10, you're going to get 60. And if you're looking for equivalency, whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator, which means you multiply that by 10. 10 times 10 is 100. So an equivalent fraction to 6 tenths is 60 one hundredths. Which fraction is equivalent to the fraction shown below 1 fourth? So I see 1, 2, 3, 4 total pieces, and the total pieces is the denominator, and the shaded in piece is my numerator. However, I do not see anything that's equivalent to 1 fourth. Let's go back to my picture here. If I wanted to show 1 fourth, like it does in the picture, I see that one of the four pieces is shaded in. Well, what would be an equivalent fraction to that? I need something that would equivalent to that. Well, I could take two of those blue pieces again, put those on top of the yellow pieces, and that would be two. But how many total pieces are we talking about? Just fill in the rest of the fraction. Two out of three, two out of four, two out of five, two out of six, two out of seven, and I'm willing to guess that one-fourth equivalent to two out of eight, because that one-fourth can also be separated into two out of eight. Let's take a look and figure it out mathematically. If I take one and I multiply it by two, I'm going to get 2. If I take 4 and I multiply it by 2, because whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator, I'm going to get 8, which means 2 eighths is equivalent to 1 fourth, and A is my answer. Just a couple more problems to go. Actually, it's the last one. Which answer shows this mixed number 3 and 3 fifths? Again, try them all out. I have the whole number 3 and 1 fifth plus 1 fifth, so that's going to be 3 and 2 fifths, 1 short. 3 plus 5 fifths plus 1 fifth. This is interesting because this one right here, 5 fifths, is equivalent to 1 whole. So really you're saying 3 plus 1, which is 4, plus 1 fifth, which is my fraction. So that's not the answer. The way I help the students remember this is whatever you have on the top, if it's the same as the bottom, it equals one whole. So one over one is one whole. Two over two is one whole. Three over three is one whole. One thousand over one thousand is one whole. One million two hundred and six over one million two hundred and six is one whole. One Mr. Pan's in the numerator on top of Mr. Pan's in the denominator is one whole. So you're just taking three plus one. How about this one? Two. This, of course, is equal to one, which would be three. And then one, two, three fifths, because those fractions together added would work. Now I have one fifth plus one fifth plus two fifth, one, two, three, four fifths. Just to check it out, you know that C is the correct answer. Oh, I was wrong. There are three more problems. Again, you're adding. However, this time, you do not have common denominators. Here's the trick I taught the students. Whichever is your biggest number, your biggest fraction, you immediately put that one in your equation. So 2 eighths is going to be added in this first one. Then take 1 fourth and convert it to an equivalent fraction. How do you do that? Multiply the top by 2 and multiply the bottom by 2 because you want to make sure the denominators equal the same exact number. So how do you make 8? When you start with 4 in the denominator, you do 4 times 2 equals 8. And 1 times 2 equals 2. Now you can add them together. 2 eighths plus 2 eighths equals 4 eighths, which could also be equivalent to 1 half if you divide it. Do the same for numbers 9 and numbers 10. 
Again, our main focus over the last couple of classes, how do we add and subtract fractions of mixed numbers, how do we compare fractions, and I'll continue to go over how to find fractions on a number line. Hope this helps for tomorrow's test. Have a great night.